Welcome to this podcast from Stratfor, leader in global intelligence. Memorial ceremonies today in Tehran for protesters who were killed during demonstrations after President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's re-election in June. Two leading opposition figures attended. They were failed presidential candidates Mir Hossein Mousavi and Mehdi Karoubi. Meanwhile, Iran's come under increasing pressure from the United States and Britain over the treatment of protesters who've been imprisoned since the crackdown on those demonstrations. Yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton called claims of prisoner abuse deplorable. But there's been a more meaningful shift in Iran this week, and it's not making a lot of headlines. Hello, and thanks for tuning in. This is the Stratfor Daily Podcast, and I'm Marla Dial. Earlier this week, we brought you a report on the political controversies surrounding President Ahmadinejad. At that point, he just sacked Iran's intelligence chief and faced another resignation from his cabinet amid turmoil over his appointment of a first vice president. The key point in that episode was that a vein of opposition to Ahmadinejad has emerged quite publicly within his own hardline political faction. Today, an update on that issue. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has named a new leader for the judiciary branch of government, and he's no friend of the president's. His name is Mohammad Sadegh Larajani, a lower-level cleric who served up to now on the 12-member Guardians Council. If the name rings a bell, it's because his older brother, Ali Larajani, is the powerful speaker of Iran's parliament. And it's no secret that there's been bad blood between the president and Ali Larajani, who quit his role as Iran's national security chief and nuclear negotiator a couple of years ago. Iran's domestic politics are beginning to resemble a soap opera, rife with intrigue and shifting alliances. In this case, the shift means that the two Larajani brothers now control two key branches of government, the legislative and the judicial. Ahmadinejad is still in charge of the executive branch, nominally, but in Tehran, it's the supreme leader who's the kingmaker. And although he's been supporting Ahmadinejad in public, Khamenei obviously is making political choices that now weigh against the president, who, let's not forget, faces significant opposition within Iran anyway. The knives are out in Tehran, and there are plenty of pointy blades being carried by hardline conservatives in the clerical regime. At a broader level, the political disarray means that there's a looming possibility of rather sudden and stark changes in Iranian policy. And that's a plot twist that would have the entire world talking. There's a wider discussion of Iran's political factions and their bearing on foreign policy matters going on at our website at www.stratfor.com. Some items you might find especially useful include a special report on Iran's government structure, several geopolitical diaries, and a recent Stratfor Insights video featuring Dr. George Friedman. You'll find lots of forecasts and discussions on other regions as well. I'm Marla Dial. Thanks so much for joining me. Colin Chapman is back from vacation, so please tune in again with him tomorrow. And have a great Thursday.